Hello there, it's Jason. Welcome to the weather window. I'm going to do my second European forecast today. I'm going to do it a little bit different from first time round. A slightly different structure for you. I'm going to make it a Christmas and New Year special. So here goes. Sit back, relax, maybe get yourself a cuppa, a mince pie as we're going to be talking about snow and Christmas time. Relax and enjoy the video. Um, please send me your comments. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube and you will get a little update on when we'll be releasing the next European forecast. So we'll do this forecast once a week and at the moment I've been focusing on Christmas time because the weather's pretty unsettled here in the UK. Uh, nothing really untoward but nothing special either. So although we're keeping up the short range forecasts on Facebook here I'm extending out a little bit further. So I'm going to do some screen sharing for you today and I'm going to bring up a number of charts. As I say I've got a slightly different structure from last time. So fingers crossed this works out nice and easily. Um, fingers crossed. There we go. Happy days. Happy days. Okay, it's taken me five days to get used to this scenario, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Okay, so I'm going to show you a number of things, mostly coming from the ECMWF, the European model. I'm going to start off with just the run up to Christmas here across Europe. Then I'm going to show you a couple of other charts uh, looking at the uh, temperature precipitation anomalies as well for Europe. So I'm going to keep it quite simple today. And I'm also going to show you the upper atmospheric patterns similar to this. So here we are, um, here we are on Tuesday the 15th of December, can you believe it's 10 days to Christmas? And what you can see here in this chart is essentially some high pressure uh, in the upper atmosphere uh, trying to get into the southwest. So I'm just going to, sorry, let me just bring this chart back to the beginning. Uh, I don't think that looks right. We've got low pressure right now, just the south of Iceland. And it's like a cyclonic block. Essentially, that low pressure can't really uh, go anywhere um, due to the presence of high latitude blocking. So it's kind of stuck just spinning round and spinning round, throwing weather fronts into the western side of Europe. So you can see there, uh, with the colours, the southeast of Europe is quite unsettled just now. Um, down in the Aegean Sea, for example, and it's also unsettled across the whole of Western Europe. So I'm just going to run this sequence quickly forward. Uh, you can see a little secondary low developing tomorrow um, or later on today uh, to the southwest of Ireland in the UK, just out there. Um, towards the Bay of Biscay. Uh, that's the parent law, if you like, the major law, but this is the, the child law, the secondary law, and that's going to run up into the western side of the UK and Europe, as you can see, as we run the sequence through. There's Thursday, Friday, we have another band of rain coming in. Uh, that low pressure is beginning to move eastward now so it's not as stuck right in the middle of the Atlantic and you can see most of Europe is actually quite settled uh, in the days to come uh, this is an area of high pressure it's been the Siberian high and that's probably been the major block because um, if you think of the Atlantic and if you think about putting a big block a big rock in the water just before um, just to the west of the UK it's stopping everything getting through properly. So we've been kind of stuck in a weather rut. Uh, and here, on Sunday the 20th, that low pressure is beginning to move through. There it is, to the, to the east of Iceland, moving in towards the Norwegian Sea. Most of Europe pretty dry, except for the northwest of Europe. Here comes another low. It's on a southerly track this time. So this is Tuesday the 22nd. And that low is steaming into England and Wales, uh, as opposed to taking the track that previous lows have taken between Iceland and Norway. So something different is happening there. This is a ridge of high pressure in the mid-Atlantic, which is changing things because as you can see later on in Tuesday and then into the eve of Christmas Eve, Here's the change for the UK. Now we're on the cold side of the jet. You can see the winds are coming in from the north or the northeast across Scotland, the north through Ireland. Still a little bit of a southwesterly component for southern England and also for France, for northern Spain 
and running into the low countries as well. It's also a southwesterly flow at this stage for Scandinavia, so it's not as cold in Scandinavia on the 23rd, but things are going to change big time. Look at that low, it actually deepens, it sinks right down into the North Sea, brings us in cold north to northeasterly winds there on the eve of Christmas Eve. There's Christmas Eve itself, so most of Europe's dry, most of Europe's looking pretty good. Um, temperatures are round about normal, maybe a little bit warmer. We'll have a look at them in a minute. Um, but the main take here is northerly winds in the UK and that trough of low pressure has sunk further down into the North Sea and it is, it is now pulling uh, really cold air down right across the UK. Will we have a white Christmas? It certainly looks possible with this chart in the UK. Moving on, Christmas Eve's evening, and we're still in that northerly flow there. There's a high pressure building up towards Iceland, bringing us in a northerly, but notice that the low pressure is moving deeper into Central Europe. So remember it was in the North Sea, and it's dived down the North Sea, it's now in the low countries and it's now heading in towards Germany and Central Europe. So the cold air now is flooding through the UK, it's flooding right through Flans and down into Spain. I don't think it's been too cold in Spain, but the cold air is getting right the way down to Spain. It's coming all the way from the Arctic, so we will really notice that, um, a, a more notable spoke a notice, noticeable cold spell uh, than we've had for a couple of years with this one here. And let us take us into, I think we get to Boxing Day. Nope, we just, we are uh, Christmas night here and we're still in that northerly flow. And you notice that the northerly winds now are running right down through France, the Riviera, all the way down, even into North Africa. So there is a big shift. So let us have a look at the, the hopefully. <laughs> Here are the 500 hectopactyl heights and a bit of a mouthful for me there this morning. Hectopactyl heights uh, and this is basically the, uh, the upper atmosphere and we're looking for areas of high and low pressure. So low pressure is blue um, and then we're going to extend right out here. Low pressure is blue and high pressure is orange. So you can see that block that I spoke about, you know that rock that's been put there to stop whatever is flowing from the west to get through to the east. You can see that in that chart there, but you can also see that high pressure does extend where this little kink is here. Um, it's like a little N shape in the lines there. That's a ridge of high pressure. It's also there um, across central parts of Europe as well. With a little dip there, um, so the U shape bit's a little bit of low pressure just Right about Turkey and affecting the gene at the moment. Okay, um, what about the temperatures? Uh, this is the current uh, week to come up to the 21st. And as you can see, most of Europe is warmer than average. Uh, any cold weather is really restricted to northern Scandinavia and um, western parts of Russia, where there is quite a cold pool of air. Notice also there's cold air over Greenland. Now these are anomaly charts, so of course we'd expect it to be cold in Greenland, but the blue is showing that it's colder than normal in Greenland. The UK is unbathed in those kind of pinky orange colours, so it's indicating, especially in England, uh, France, the low countries, and Scandinavia, that the temperatures are going to be three or four degrees above average this particular week, running up to Monday the 21st, the, the winter solstice. So it's looking pretty mild. Um, let's have a little look at the precipitation. I hope you're enjoying my new structure. I'm just going to stick to week by week. Um, precipitation anomalies, well, the green suggests wetter than normal. So you can see western parts of the UK, western Scotland, the Irish Sea coasts, the southwest of England, running down into northern France, into northern Spain, and Spain in general, Portugal as well having it a little bit wetter than normal. So too are areas of Scandinavia, but most of Europe are drier than normal. And you can see that slightly unsettled regime that I was referring to earlier on, around about Cyprus, parts of the Aegean, maybe getting some showers from Greece this week, possibly some thunderstorms, and working its way into Turkey as well. Okay, um, so, 
What about week two? So we're going to look at the Christmas week now. Um, yeah, so this is the 21st to the 28th. Wow, okay. This has cold weather written all over it for Northwestern Europe. Notice the high pressure again. All over the North Atlantic, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Northern Scandinavia, and Northern Russia. It still extends down into Southeastern Europe, so it's still looking fairly dry there. But this trough of low pressure in the blue area there, which is just to the east of the UK, what that's going to do is bring down northerly winds. So this is a really cold signal, actually. Uh, something very untypical for the UK. Potential for snow throughout the Christmas week. Obviously, I'm giving you details daily updates on that just now and we will keep tracking that. So what about what about the temperature anomalies for this particular week, Christmas week? So we'll just move you on to those up to the 28th. Ah, there's a there's a change for you. We've actually got the blues now extending down through the UK, the whole of Scotland, Northern England, the entire um, island of uh, of Ireland, I beg your pardon and running down um, the eastern side of the Atlantic Ocean. Mainland Europe still signaled to be a little bit warmer than normal, but remember this is a weekly anomaly, and I think the warmest anomalies will be at the beginning of the period, maybe running up to Christmas, but as soon as we get to Christmas, I think that these areas here, Scandinavia, low countries, France and Spain will cool down as well with the what warmer anomalies being pulled east across Europe. So for Christmas for Europe, northwestern Europe starts off cold with wintry potential and it slowly moves its way into central Europe but central Europe will begin dry and reasonably mild and that dry and mild weather will transfer further east through the Christmas week and more areas of Europe will begin to, to cool down. Let's have a little look as well at the precipitation anomalies for the Christmas week. Okay, so you've seen dry, drier than normal anomalies to the northwest of Europe. So that's showing us something different going on. This is, of course, where we have the most unsettled weather during the winter months, and we usually have low pressure round about Iceland and Greenland. Not the case here. We've got northern blocking, uh, we've got high pressure there for sure because it's drier than normal also a tendency for northerly and easterly winds and that's why it's drier in the western side of scotland and ireland and a little bit wetter than average those little green blobs there uh, are indicative of snow showers although this is a very low res model um i will give you the detail of this for the christmas forecast as we get closer um but it does look wetter than normal for the southeast uh, for France and into Central Europe, Alpine areas as well. So I think there could be a lot of snow in Christmas week in these areas here. Notice that Scandinavia is mostly wetter than normal, and it's going to be snow rather than rain, of course, with the colder temperatures. But notice that the west of Norway is a little bit drier than normal. Again, indicative of high pressure out here to the northwest. Very interesting patterns. If you like it cold, and especially if you're after a cold Christmas. Okay, let's run on a little bit further. Let's run into the New Year week and see what's going on. Okay, so that high pressure is hanging about. It's centred just south of Iceland. It extends into Greenland, into Scandinavia once again. And the blue is the low pressure. So this trough of low pressure is a displaced jet stream. The jet stream has been pushed way far south because of all this high pressure in the northern latitude. So the jet stream is essentially running into Spain, into southern France, into Italy, and increasingly towards Greece. It's going to become more unsettled in Greece as we move towards uh, 2021 and into the first week of the new year. So Eastern Europe settling down during the Christmas week but becoming increasingly unsettled from the West during New Year's week. That's the message there. Wintry charts for the UK, wintry charts for sure. Uh, a fascinating run 
once again. So let me take you through the temperature anomalies for the new year week. And as you can see, wow, okay, we're into deep shades of blue there for the UK, something that we don't see very often at all these days. So that is another cold week being signaled from the ECMWF. That's two cold weeks, Christmas and New Year week, signaled to be colder than average. And you can see the blue colours now have extended all the way down to North Africa. They've extended eastward across France, into the Netherlands, into Germany, into Switzerland. The colder air is slowly transferring itself into Central Europe, but remaining cold in northwestern parts of Europe as well. Really exciting stuff. If you like the cold weather and you like it dry. So let's have a look at the precipitation anomalies and see where we're standing there. Okay, wow, look at that chat as well. You know, we're really setting up a pattern here. And I just wonder, I just wonder if it's a heads up for something a wee bit more severe at some stage this winter, because this is a wee bit unusual. Um, the ECMWF is going for two cold and relatively dry weeks for the northwest of Europe. You can see where the high pressure is. Um, still round about Iceland, extending into the North Atlantic, through the UK is much drier than average. Western parts of Norway are drier than average and it's beginning to dry up as well. And the Netherlands, Northwest France, the, the, the unsettled weather that we spoke about pushing east across Europe has actually got east. The Med is looking quite unsettled. This is a suddenly tracking jet stream for sure. You can see the wet weather extends from the Canary Islands up into North Africa. Um, along the south of Spain and to Italy, particularly wet in the Balkans and the west of Greece, I've got to say, and Turkey is looking quite unsettled. The Aegean less so, but pretty unsettled as we move into southeastern parts of Europe as well. So Poland looking unsettled as well. Very interesting set of charts. Shall we do it? Shall we go one week further just to see if the pattern is maintained? Why not? Let's do it. My monthly forecast. Wow. Okay. So, as I say, the ECMWF updates twice a week. It's updated this morning. That's why I was keen to get this forecast on straight away for you. It is maintaining the pattern right into the middle of January. High pressure to the north, lots of blocking, a southerly displaced jet stream, unsettled for the med, more settled for the north. Looking really interesting. I just wonder then because I haven't looked at it before this forecast. I like to keep it a wee bit of a surprise for me also. I wonder what the temperature anomalies are looking like. Wow, okay. Ooh, is that a beast from the east? Maybe, possibly, because you can see that the UK is still covered in the blue colours and quite deep blue, deep blue across France. So this is signifying that temperatures may not get above zero um, running into the middle of January. Now, it's just one model run and it's just one model. So I'm not saying to you, right, we're getting plunged into the freezer for three weeks. However, the charts are suggesting that maybe it's a possibility and we could pull off some particularly cold days and we could pull off some snow. This cold air now has went right down into the Mediterranean. So even the Mediterranean is in the cold side of the jet. So now we could be talking about snow, um, not just for the Alps, for parts of Italy and the Balkans and the Pyrenees as well. Uh, parts of Spain could get snow. Let's have a look at the temperature anomalies just to confirm that for this week, the middle of January. Um, sorry, the precipitation anomalies. And you can see it's still dry to the northwest of Europe and it's dry over Scandinavia. This looks like a beast from the east to me. Whether it actually happens, uh, I'm not sure, but the signals are that it's dry from Russia right the way through northeastern Europe, northern Europe, into Scotland, up towards Iceland, down towards France, and the unsettled conditions shown here in the green, um, higher anomalies of rain than would be expected are down in the Mediterranean. So it's a southerly tracking jet stream. That seems to be high pressure. It's looking really, really exciting. So it is. I thought I would end with one other chart today. And it's a different model altogether. This is the GFS, the, the global forecasting uh, model. Um, 
and I'm looking at the North Pole view down. What I want to highlight is that here's the North Pole here, and you can see that green area. That's high pressure right over the top of the pole. Okay, so the North Atlantic and Arctic oscillations are negative. And when high pressure is right over the pole, it can allow the Arctic cold to seep down into the middle latitudes, sometimes coming into Scandinavia or Europe. Sometimes it comes into Siberia. Sometimes it comes into Greenland, which is always uh, good news if you're looking for snow in the UK. Occasionally it goes into the Canadian side of the Arctic and we tend to miss the more extreme weather in Europe. But it's this area of high pressure I'm looking at. I'm just going to quickly go through the sequence. And what to notice is that that green area of high pressure just stays in situ right over the North Pole. Right over the North Pole. Um, there's a high pressure over Europe in the coming days over Central Europe. Um, there's a low pressure coming in off the Atlantic for the UK and for Western Europe as I run this sequence on. We're on to Friday the 18th, looking pretty unsettled for Western Europe. But notice the high pressure over the North Pole. That's really what I'm trying to show here. And it extends down into Greenland. So this is where we may, may be seeing signs that we could have a little beast from the east in January, just possibly. Early, early, early days and it's just an early heads up for you. Running that sequence on, the high pressure remains over the North Pole, extends into Greenland, the low pressure starts to track through the UK and eventually gets into Europe there the 22nd. So Europe cools down quicker according to the GFS, uh, the Global Forecasting System. Uh, it's cooling down a little bit quicker. Notice they are on Tuesday the 22nd, still high pressure over the pole and over Greenland and extending into a mid-Atlantic ridge. So what tends to happen is that that ridge goes up towards Greenland and then back into the Arctic and then it moves around. So then it might push the low pressures further south, displacing the jet stream. Let's run on further. This is the eve of Christmas Eve, looking really promising for wintry weather in Scotland, got to say. Uh, most of the Europe, European continent is pretty mild. Spain looks as if, and northern France looks as if it's going to get a little um, a developing area of low pressure. So that could bring some strong winds and heavy rain actually into France and possibly the southern part of Britain. But there'll be weather str fronts strung out here that separate the mild area to the south from the cold area from the north. And what that does is it gives us snow potential for the UK. But if you're in the warm side of that, then you could incur some really heavy rain, in fact, and perhaps turn into snow as the fronts pull through and the cold air begins to undercut. Um, let's move you on a wee bit further this Christmas Eve and the northerly flow. So look at where the winds are coming from. They are coming from the Arctic Circle, uh, way north of Scandinavia, plunging down the Norwegian Sea, the North Sea, the Northwest Atlantic, down through the UK, and at this stage, just beginning to push into northern Spain. What about the big day itself? Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here we go, Christmas Day, northerly winds. And you can see a northeasterly component to the winds north of Scandinavia, bringing the winds all the way down from the north right into the Mediterranean. Uh, let's run you later into Christmas Day. We maintain that northerly flow. Wow, what a run. Okay, I mean, everyone likes different stuff. I do appreciate that. Um, different weather. Some people like it warm, some people like it cold, some people like it just being comfortable, some people like the wind and the rain, other people don't. Well, I don't know about you, but this floats my boat because it's saying that we're going to have some dry weather uh, over Christmas and New Year and into January. Um, the only way really to have dry weather is to have it cold at this time of year. If we have moist, uh, moisture-laden winds coming in from the southwest, then it's just going to bring continuous weather fronts with just little windows of dry weather in between. So we're looking at something more sustained in terms of dry weather. Um, first of all, in Central Europe this week. Then something colder comes in in the beginning of the next week. It brings Western and Central Europe into a cold plunge of Arctic air. And then we're looking at the high pressure building and possibly setting up a Scandinavian high, possibly setting up some northern blocking 
possibly bring in some really chilly easterly or northeasterly winds in and consequently the Mediterranean is going to become increasingly unsettled. So where you would expect it to be nice and dry, it's going to be less settled and where you would expect it to be wet and windy and possibly mild, it's going to be colder and drier. So we really do have something quite interesting and quite different happening this year. Is it a precursor to winter? Certainly my winter forecast suggests we would get a cold spell at the beginning of Jan in December, which we've had. Yesterday was the first milder day. I thought it would go a little bit colder towards and during the Christmas period. I thought January might be a little mixed. There could be cold snaps and it would get colder again in February. Are we seeing signs here, in fact, that the colder weather is going to get in over Christmas and continue to flirt with us as we go into the middle of January? Possibly. It's too hard to say, um, but these look like promising charts if you're after snow, and I think a lot of areas of Europe will have snow. Thanks so much for watching. It's been another long forecast, but I'd like to just take you through the data. Hope you found that to be in a better structure than the previous European forecast. Just sticking to the one week at the time and moving through the different charts. I hope you enjoyed the ones I selected for you today. I hope you're having a great day and you have a great week and uh, you're enjoying getting ready for Christmas time. Well, I'll be back again next week with another European forecast and I'll also update the Christmas UK forecast in a couple of days time and show you if we are still on for snow. Just bear in mind, I know I'm making it sound like we're going to have a white Christmas here. I'm saying it's possible. It's possible for some parts of the UK. I'm not guaranteeing snow everywhere on Christmas Day at this stage, but before Christmas, during Christmas and after Christmas, there is a possibility of snow. All the models are showing it. It's too early to pin down the detail for your location and exactly what it's doing at a certain time at this stage because we're 10 days out and the reliable forecast would only be three days, four days, five days. I tried to push the boat out a little bit, um, but I always risk that I may get it wrong doing that. So that's like why other forecasters are maybe that little bit more cautious, um, especially the Met Office. Um, they haven't mentioned anything about cold weather or snow at Christmas to this moment uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, so it's not really in the reliable time frame is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I do expect something cold and wintry to happen. And I do think parts of the UK will have snow this Christmas time. And I think parts of Europe will also have a white Christmas, but it's more into Christmas week itself. So between Christmas and New Year, something very, very interesting. You can see the sun is shining gloriously here in Saltcoats today. We call it sunny Saltcoats. I come from Ayrshire in the southwest of Scotland. I'm on the Clyde coast and it's a beautiful sunny day uh, here today. And, and you know, there will be spells of sunshine around this week as well, uh, but wet on Wednesday for the UK, showery on Thursday, and we'll have a windy spell on Friday, although it's going to be mild, uh, showers at the weekend, and then it starts getting interesting. Okay, thank you so much for listening to all my weather geekery and rambles. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.